welcome to target ies i am prakash rajput and today we will see applications of gauss law so yesterday we have uh, in the previous video i mean we have uh, learned about the gauss law what was that it was the total electric flux the total electric flux will be the total, total electric flux through a surface will be equals to the total charge enclosed inside the surface we are considering and the total electric flux is given by d dot ds the dot product of d and d is displacement flux density and ds vector the surface we are ta taking and it is an closed surface and the charge which is present inside that closed surface will give the total electric flux this is gauss law and we have seen its differential form also del dot d is equals to rho v if the charge is present over a volume so this equation will be there del dot d is equals to rho v this is the maxwell's first equation also so using this gauss law we will see some applications of gauss law that is elect uh, the displacement flux density we will find out due to point charge, line charge and surface charge and the volume charge also. So before that for a uh, for Gauss law to be applied we need a surface which is called Gaussian surface. So a Gaussian surface have some should have some properties that what Gaussian surface should be taken. Gaussian surface is taken such that the D D at Gaussian surface whatever surface you are taking as Gaussian surface D at Gaussian surface should have D at Gaussian surface should have either tangential component or normal component either it should have tangential component or it should have normal component ab isse hoga kya kyunki d dot ds dot product hai yahan par to ye d ds cos theta ho jayega to agar tangential component hoga if it is a tangential component to ds vector क्या हो जाएगा उसके परपेंडिकुलर हो जाएगा यानी कि वहां पर थीटा 90 डिग्री हो जाएगा फॉर टेंजेंशियल कंपोनेंट तो डी डी कितना हो जाएगा भाई मतलब डी डी एस कॉस थीटा कितना हो जाएगा जीरो हो जाएगा ठीक है इफ इट इज नॉर्मल कंपोनेंट तो क्या होगा जैसे ये सरफेस है ये इसका डी एस वैक्टर है और डी भी नॉर्मल ही है सरफेस के नॉर्मल ही है डी एस डी भी ठीक है डी और डी एस वेक्टर दोनों के दोनों नॉर्मल हैं सरफेस के तो इनके बीच में एंगल क्या हो गया थीटा इक्वल्स टू जीरो डिग्री तो इस केस में जो डी डॉट डी एस है वो क्या हो जाएगा इट विल बी इट विल बी समवर्ट आई मीन कॉस थीटा जीरो कॉस जीरो विल बिकम वन एंड जस्ट डी डी एस विल बी रिमेनिंग ठीक है तो इस तरीके से आपको गॉसिन सरफेस लेना दैट इट शुड हैव इधर टेंजिशियल कॉम्पोनेंट or normal component the other property is that you can take whatever shape you want to take you can take whatever shape you want to take but it should be such that it should enclose it should enclose the whole charge which you are considering it should enclose the whole charge it can be of any shape it it can be of irregular any shape it should enclose the whole charge and for enclosing it should be it should be a closed surface it should be a closed surface it should be a closed surface kyunki gauss law sirf aur sirf closed surface ke liye hi applicable hai maine ek previous video mein bhi bataya tha गॉस लॉ जो है वो क्लोज सरफेस के लिए ही वैलिड है 
next thing you should uh, take care of that uh, the surface you are considering as gauze surface it uh, on the on the surface on the surface the normal component normal component of d should be should be constant all over the surface all over the surface is it should be constant as is tarike se aapko matlab gaussian surface lena hai ki jo normal component aayega jo surface aap consider kar rahe ho us par wo constant rehna chahiye wo constant rehna chahiye it is constant so ye kuch properties thi गॉसियन सरफेस ताकि इजीली uh, आप क्या गॉसियन सरफेस आपको कंसीडर करना चाहिए वो समझ में आए सो द फर्स्ट एप्लीकेशन वी विल सी इज इलेक्ट्रिक फ्लक्स डेंसिटी ड्यू टू अ पॉइंट चार्ज इलेक्ट्रिक फ्लक्स डेंसिटी ड्यू टू अ पॉइंट चार्ज सो लेट अस फर्स्ट कंसीडर अ पॉइंट चार्ज हियर इज माय पॉइंट चार्ज नाउ थ्रू दिस पॉइंट चार्ज द फ्लक्स लाइन विल गो एज दिस इज अ पॉजिटिव चार्ज व्हिच आई एम कंसीडरिंग द फ्लक्स लाइन विल गो रेडियली आउटवर्ड्स and i have to consider a gaussian surface to apply a gauss law so what i can take as a gaussian surface will be a sphere because first i make then i will tell ab yahan se flux lines will be radially outwards to it and you can see that at every point on the surface at every point the flux lines are normal because yahan par aap dekhoge to ye is direction mein to ye is surface ke normal hai yahan par aap dekhoge to ye is surface ke normal hai yahan par ye 90 degree ka angle banayega so you can see that they are normal to the surface and you can also see uh, you will know that uh, on the surface the d will come same and it, it is having only normal component of the flux uh, d vector now we apply the gauss law suppose this uh, this gaussian surface has a radius of r because that is also required because we want to know the surface area for this and this is uh, a sphere basically okay which i have uh, which i have taken a gaussian surface तो इस प्रॉब्लम के लिए कंसीडर किया गया है गॉसियन सरफेस वो एक स्फेयर है तो यहां पर गॉस लॉ अप्लाई करते हैं व्हाट द गॉस लॉ सेज इज दैट क्लोज इंटीग्रल ऑफ डी डॉट डीएस इज डी डॉट डीएस इज द टोटल चार्ज एनक्लोज्ड इन इट सो सपोज द चार्ज इज एनक्लोज्ड हियर द पॉइंट चार्ज इज ऑफ द वैल्यू क्यू पॉइंट चार्ज इज ऑफ द वैल्यू q so d dot ds and the ds vector will be here in spherical coordinate it will be in the direction of ar cap it will be in the direction of ar cap so d dot ds will become here if you will apply it will come as d ds the surface area of sphere is 4 pi r square 4 pi r square and the total charge enclosed is q so i can write d as q by 4 pi r square this thing we have already uh, written this this thing we have already know that uh, uh, when we were writing the definition for electric flux density what was it the total charge we uh, the to the total flux over passing through an area total flux passing through an area there was there were no closed surface so here the gauss law here we are applying this is a closed surface so d kisi bhi surface ke liye nikala ja sakta hai but gauss law ke liye humko closed surface hi chahiye theek hai lekin hum point charge ke liye electric flux density ki value nikal chuke hain is tarike se theek hai ab ye gauss law se yahan se prove bhi ho jati hai ki ya fir gauss law prove ho jati hai is tarike se ठीक है d is equals to q by 4 pi r square if i write in vector form so it will have only r component and also you can write 
the expression for electric field intensity because d is nothing but epsilon not e d is nothing but epsilon not e or if there is a different medium so it can be epsilon e ar cap and you know that due to a point charge the electric field is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r square ar cap so here this uh, we already know now here we can see through gauss law we uh, attain the same result here so this is the first application now this is a sim uh, simple thing which we have done for a uh, using gauss law for a uh, uh, finding the electric flux density due to a point charge and electric field intensity also Now let us see for an infinite line charge if we apply the Gauss law. So here is my infinite line charge having line charge density suppose rho L and we know for this electric field intensity at a point electric field intensity at a point suppose here I am considering a point electric field intensity is given by rho L by 2 pi epsilon naught rho arrow cap you already know this so let us see if we if we can find the same result using gauss law also now to apply gauss law we will require the gaussian surface so for this line charge uh, what gaussian surface we can take we cannot take sphere he here we have to take gaussian surface such that it will have either tangential component or normal component and every point on the surface which we are taking the d value should be constant so what the gaussian surface here will be so here i can use this as gaussian surface i can use this as gaussian surface because it is a cylindrical body we can take cylinder as our gaussian surface because you can see that the electric field intensity i am finding at this point electric field intensity I am finding at this point P if I find electric field at this point it will be same as this point P only and I can uh, find electric field intensity at this point it will be also same electric field intensity or you can say electric flux density uh, there is only a difference of epsilon naught so which is a constant so both uh, both can be applicable that for a Gaussian surface either uh, either you can say that electric flux density should be constant or electric field intensity should be constant for all these point i am taking on the curved surface of the cylinder is constant now we will see uh, here if we apply gauss law what it will be again the closed surface integral d dot ds should be equals to the charge enclosed in it as this is a line charge so i can write it as rho l dl rho l dl so d dot ds now there are three surfaces in this, this in this cylinder one the top part here this one and one is here the bottom part and one is this curved surface so i have to take the surface integral of all the ones suppose this is my first surface this is my second surface and this curved surface is my third surface so I have to do first first surface surface integral plus second surface integral plus third surface integral so here uh, d is everywhere d dot ds d dot ds d dot ds here this will be equals to the integration of rho l dl so let us uh, see the for the first surface what will happen the electric field intensity direction or the displacement flux di uh, density direction where it will be for the first surface the electric field intensity due to line charge will be in the row direction only in the row direction only for bottom surface also the 
electric field intensity or the electric flux density is in the row direction only in the row direction only so the top and the bottom surface will have only tangential component tangential component what is the surface vector for the top part what is the surface vector for the top part it will be like this it will be like this now you can see this is the direction of d and this is the direction of surface vector so what are they making a 90 degree angle so here the dot product of bo both these will become zero so the first integral or the third integral i mean the first surface integral or the third surface uh, i have taken it as second so second surface integral will become zero as this surface has a ds vector in downward direction but the uh, displacement flux density direction is here so it is also making a 90 degree angle here so both these becomes zero the only thing remains is this so we have to evaluate this integral only the third part so i can write like this integral d dot ds over this curved surface equals to the charge enclosed which will be rho l into l so what this become d ds what will be ds what is the curved surface area of cylinder it will be 2 pi rho h if i consider the Gaussian surface height of h here for height h the charge will be rho l into h here this h on both the sides gets cancelled what you get as d is rho l by 2 pi rho if i write in vector form it will be a rho cap you know that on the curved surface the uh, direction of the d will be in a rho cap direction only here it will be in the a rho cap direction only right so you can write in the form of vector also this form you have seen earlier too for a line charge rho l by 2 pi rho rho l by 2 pi rho d vector we have already seen it now we can also write from this equation only epsilon naught e if i can if i am considering free space 2 pi rho a rho cap and e can be written as rho l by 2 pi epsilon naught rho a rho cap this equation we have already derived in the derivation of electric field intensity due to infinite line charge so here also we have seen using gauss law we can all we can arrive at this equation so this is the electric field intensity or this is the electric flux density due to a infinite line charge and we can find these things using gauss law also so so these uh, this is some applications of gauss law now we can use gauss law for a surface i mean for a surface charge density also just as like we have used for a uh, line charge and a point charge so what we have to consider is a surface charge and then we have to uh, see when we have then we have to uh, find a gaussian surface for it and on that we can find the uh, displacement flux density and electric flux density and we can uh, uh, think of uh, what we have find what we have found earlier so let us consider a surface charge here now here is my infinite sheet charge having rho s surface charge density for this i have considered this Gaussian surface having an element ds here now you know that for a surface charge density the electric field direction will be first in the normal to the surface in the upward direction suppose this is if i take the 
ordinate system this is x this is y this is z so it, this is in az cap and the downward direction minus az cap this will be the direction of electric flux density or electric field intensity for the surface charge now i have considered this uh, gaussian surface which is cutting the surface like this and i want to check that what the what is the uh, if i apply the gauss law what will be the result so here you can see that it is having six surfaces it is having six surfaces and as per the requirement i have considered this as a cuboid type gaussian surface so here if we apply the gauss law we have to apply the gauss law for the all the six surfaces to uh, so that the um, closed surface can be called so what is gauss law it is d dot ds equals to the charge enclosed as this is a surface charge so i can write as rho s ds i can write it as rho s ds now the charge enclosed here will be what it will be this area multiplied with the surface charge density right now we'll see the surface vector of the surfaces of the gaussian surface so surface vector for the top surface will be in this direction bottom surface will be in this direction and for sides it will be like this so you can see for the four sides this side this side back side and this left side for sides the surface vector and the displacement flux density vector or the electric field intensity vector are perpendicular so i can write it as for d dot ds for sides plus d dot ds for the top surface plus d dot ds for the bottom surface now this value will become zero because d and ds here d is in the az direction and the surfaces uh, the ds vector for the sides of this cuboid will be in either the x direction or in the y direction which means they are perpendicular and dot product for perpendicular vectors is zero so this integral will be gone only the remaining integral will be this now let us evaluate this what it will be so here if we evaluate this so what will be the ds vector for upper part it will be uh, if i am considering the coordinate axis as x y z so it will be d and ds vector will be dx dy and for the top surface it is az cap for the top surface it will be az cap and here d vector for the top surface is also az cap so az a, a dot uh, az cap dot az will become 1 plus here this d dot ds here for this bottom surface what will be ds so it will be also for the bottom surface in the same direction they are in same direction so it will be something uh, also like this d dx dy right so it can be written as 2 integral 2d on dx dy which is equals to the charge enclosed which is equals to the charge enclosed in so charge enclosed kitna ho jayega is pure area mein it can be written as rho s integral because rho s is uniformly distributed charge here i'm considering so rho s can come out of the integration and ds can be written as dx dy and what will be the uh, unit vector if i consider here so i will write the uh, unit vector later because we know that for the upper part it will be going az cap and for the bottom part it will be going minus az cap so here this we can equate now these two 
because here also integral of dx dy here also integral of dx dy so whatever the surface we can write it as 2d is equals to rho s and d is equals to rho s by 2 and if i write in vector form it can be written as like this so this equation also we have written earlier and if i make it in the electric field intensity form so it can be written like this e vector is equals to rho s by 2 epsilon due to infinite surface you know this so here also we get the same equation using gauss law for an infinite surface charge so we can apply gauss law or any thing and consider a gaussian surface and you can get the electric flux density and electric field intensity so here what we have seen uh, in the application of gauss law whatever we have uh, considered earlier as point charge line charge surface charge and we found the same equation for them using gauss law too as we have found uh, using coulomb's law we can say using coulomb's law here so we can say that we have proved gauss law using coulomb's law here. Now let us see another topic on the application of Gauss law. Electric field intensity due to conducting sphere. Now for a conducting sphere, it is not a hollow sphere. It is a conducting sphere. For a conducting sphere, whatever the charge in the uh, for this conducting sphere, it will be spread uniformly over the surface for a conducting sphere the charge gets uniformly spread over the surface there will be no charge inside the surface for a conducting sphere there will be no charge inside the conduct uh, inside the conducting sphere all the charge will be spread over a uh, over the surface uniformly so now we want to find electric field intensity due to this sphere in at every point at every point by mean that outside this sphere inside this sphere and on this sphere so what I have to do is use Gauss law to find this because that will be easier using Gauss law to find the electric field intensity uh, at every point so suppose for this point I'm saying and I'm considering this sphere as radius uh, R let us say or we can let us say R and I'm considering a go uh, I'm finding electric field uh, for 0 So this is my radius of the Gaussian surface. So it will have three cases. It will have three cases. So let us say the case one where the R is varying from the capital R to infinite. Capital R to infinite. Which means that the point of uh, point at which we are finding electric field intensity is outside the conducting sphere so what i have to do is i have to consider a gaussian surface for this i have to consider a gaussian surface so let us say i have considered this sphere as my gaussian surface which is having radius small r now Using Gauss law, what you can say is that d dot ds, d dot ds is equal to the total charge enclosed in it, the total charge enclosed in it. So let us say the charge on this sphere is Q, the charge on this sphere is Q. So what will happen now? d dot ds 
it will have a direction radially outward and the surface vector will also be radially outward AR cap which, which it means because it is a sphere so let us say spherical coordinate system so D vector and AR cap are in the same direction so the dot product becomes D dot DS this will become D will come out and we will see what will be the DS and the total charge enclosed is Q so here D into the surface area for this sphere will become 4 pi r square equals to Q you can uh, find this surface area also if I write in place of ds if I write in place of ds r square sine theta d theta d phi because this is nothing but a uh, sphere so for sphere in the direction if the uh, direction of the vector is in the direction of AR cap for a surface so what is the differential surface for that it is R square sine theta D theta D phi where the limits of theta are from 0 to pi and for phi they are from 0 to 2 pi so you can also solve this if I integrate this so R square will come out and what is remaining sine theta D theta as they are independent so I can write them in independent integrals so here this will become r square sin theta integration will be minus cos theta and here phi it will be so limits are from 0 to 2 pi cos minus cos theta limits are 0 to pi and if you solve this r square cos pi will become minus 1 which makes it plus 1 and minus pi here is and uh, minus the lower limit minus minus becomes plus so here it becomes 1 plus 1 and here it becomes 2 pi so you can see here also we are getting 4 pi r square so this is the surface area for uh, sphere so which I am which I am writing here so now what the d becomes d becomes q by 4 pi r square I can also write E is equals to Q by 4 pi epsilon naught r square and if I write in the vector form it will be E equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by r square a r so this is if the go if the point of interest or the point at which we, uh, I am calculating the field is outside the conducting sphere. So it will behave like a point charge because we are getting the same formula for uh, the for a point which is lying outside this sphere. It will like it will be like a point charge, but it it's actually not. So now this is the condition for this case. If the Gaussian surface radius is from from the surface to the infinite, it is having radius from, uh, which is R, capital R to infinite. Now, let us consider the second case, which is at the boundary. That means, for case 2, R is equal to R, which means that the Gaussian surface which I will take, which will be, on this surface only on this surface only the Gaussian surface which I will take will be on this surface only so it will be something like this so this is my new Gaussian surface for Ga uh, for case 2 where R becomes capital R small r becomes capital R so what the uh, we will apply the Gauss law D dot ds equals to the charge enclosed equal to the charge enclosed 
here also the charge will be q here also the charge will be q and d dot ds having same component because the surface vector and the d vector are in the same direction that is ar cap so this becomes again d into 4 pi now as r is I mean the small r is equals to capital r so i can write here as this 4 pi capital r square equals to q and i can write as d is equals to q by, uh, q by 4 pi r square and e is equals to q by 4 pi epsilon naught r square and if i write in vector form if i write in vector form here it will be q by 4 pi epsilon naught r square right this is when the gaussian surface which i'm considering is on the uh, on the surface of the conducting sphere now the third case this is the case 2 the third case is when r is less than this radius of conducting sphere so this was my conducting sphere and now i'm considering the gaussian surface inside this which means that my uh, field point is like this on this surface somewhere so now if I apply again the Gauss law d dot ds equals to now what the what is the charge enclosed I have told that for a conducting sphere all the charge will be on the surface of it all the charge will be on the surface of it there will be no charge present inside the conducting sphere so as there is no charge what is the charge enclosed what is the charge enclosed in it it will be zero so we can say here d becomes zero e becomes zero right so this is the condition for this case now we have found three conditions basically we can also plot this if we want to plot this on a graph so we can also plot this wait so we can plot this also so here if i consider here is my electric field if i write here is my electric field magnitude and here is the radius of the Gaussian surface which I am taking here. So, based on this, up to R, up to R, up to R means the capital R. When the R, small r, becomes the capital R, up to that value, the electric field is zero. I mean, when R is just less than this capital R. At this in case 2 what we have found the electric field it is this q by 4 pi epsilon naught capital r square so suppose this is somewhat here if i made this as a straight line This is R and at this point the value of the field is Q by 4 pi epsilon naught capital R square. After that what is happening? After that what is happening? We can see that here 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is constant. The charge Q is constant. We can see that E is varying inversely to the square of the distance e is varying inversely to the square of the distance so what you will get you will get a graph something like this for e inversely proportional to r square so this is the value of electric field uh, graph uh, when the 
Gaussian surface which I am taking depending on that so up to the capital value of R there is no charge so electric field is zero and at the surface it is maximum and after that it is decreasing inversely to the square of the distance at which I am considering the Gaussian surface so these are some applications of Gauss law we will see more use of uh, Gauss law we will apply uh, uh, Gauss law and different things now but in the next lecture so this is all for this video we will meet in the next lecture thank you